Earlier today, we spoke to Wang Weiyi, General Fund Manager of Fund Supermart Ma Malaysia, an online unit tr trust distribution platform. We asked him what a weaker ringgit means for local equities. I think, uh, of course, weakening, if you have a trend of uh, weakening ringgit, then it makes uh, investors, overseas especially, think twice whether they want to put their money in the Malaysia equities markets. Because if equity markets are not performing well, and you have further weakness on ringgit, then you will be on a losing trade. And if we look at the ringgit performance, I think it has uh, been weakening since September last year, along with the fall in energy prices. Yeah. Now, given the type of growth projections for the economy, as well as uh, potential earnings growth for the corporates here in Malaysia, what kind of fair value can we look at for the KLCI? I think in the near term, KLCI is uh, probably we are going to see very limited upside. Uh, like I mentioned earlier on, the various economic conditions, uh, the strength of uh, ringgit, as well as a uh, potential rate hike in the US during the last quarter of this year. These are going to weigh down on KLCI index. And if you look at the valuations itself, uh, 12, 16 plus times for 2015 earnings, which is not exactly low. It is, in fact, at a premium to historical average. And the earnings growth itself, because of the economic conditions, is just a paltry 5.5%. So given all this, uh, I don't think that there is going to be significant upside for the KLCI index, unfortunately. Yeah, so we, we will put it at close to 1,800. Yeah, second quarter earnings uh, have been described as unexciting. So what can we expect for the third quarter? I think hopefully with the GST, people get used to it. Uh, we hope to see more exciting earnings growth in the third quarter. And of course, uh, as the ringgit has weakened quite significantly, um, we hope that the exports is going to pick up as well. So the export-related sector, we think that it's going to see a, see a boost. And maybe in quarter three, we see a slight bound in the GDP numbers as well as a better earnings growth numbers. Will investors be able to shake off this uh, fear they have of the macro outlook for Malaysia, you know, their domestic political concerns as well as the weakness in the ringgit? But recently we did have Fitch uh, revise their outlook for the credit rating to stable and uh, recently uh, S&P as well saying, all right, there are some things to consider and to be cautious about, but they themselves have said there's a potential for an upside here. Yeah, I think uh, for the ringgit issues, uh, aside from the low oil prices, of course, political issues as well as uh, 1MDB played a major part in uh, the ringgit's weakness. And I think given all these concerns, and if we look around the rest of the regions, especially North Asia, I think foreign investors will find better opportunity, better value in other overseas markets. So in, in this essence, I think uh, it is very hard to shake off a lot of things that is uh, happening surrounding Mal Malaysian markets right now. So uh, that's why we, I, I would say that uh, it is a limited growth for the KLCI index. But investors, of course, uh, if they are willing to take more risk, go into the small cap sectors, I think there is where there will be a lot more potential. After all, the earnings growth for the small cap sectors is at 16 plus percent this year. And uh, if you look at the valuations point of view, it is uh, under 10 price to earnings ratio. So that, that could give us some opportunity. All right, small caps looking interesting. And since volatility is here to stay, where else can investors look to find uh, the yield that they require? I think uh, for our point of view, uh, we still like uh, equities market. So investors should still look at equities market. Main thing is uh, the uh, monetary policies around the, world, uh, around the world is still very, very low, right? Uh, as in very accommodative to economic growth. So in the Asia part, I think investors can look at the North Asia. Uh, North Asia part, we like Japan, Korea, as well as uh, we like uh, China. So for these three markets, I think uh, for Japan, we're seeing uh, the Bank of uh, Japan is committed to keeping inflation uh, target at 2%. So we have a continued weakening of the Japanese yen. And of course, that will be very good for a lot of the companies that are export oriented. In Korea last year, they suffered a big drop in earnings numbers. So we've, from a lower base, we are looking at much better earnings growth this year, and their value, valuation is very attractive. And for China, uh, we are looking at the hedge share side. Hedge share side uh, is something that uh, we are very positive because it has been uh, suffered from the indiscriminate selling of the hedge shares. But uh, on the hedge share side, if you look at the valuations, it is very, very low. And the uh, earnings uh, growth potential of all the companies on the hedge shares, uh, it is still very, very strong. All right, Wei, last point on fixed income. Anything looking enticing in the domestic space? 
I think for the fixed income space, uh, we probably have to get investors to look at the corporate side because uh, although the yields have been coming out on uh, government bonds, but uh, it is still very, very low on a historical basis. So for investors who want to look at uh, get more yields, then of course it will be very, very good if they can look at uh, the corporate uh, 